Another thing I always want to ask a, a referee, what was your feelings on the Montreal screw job? I mean, my boss mm-hmm. asked me to do something. Mm-hmm. I got to do it, whether I like it or not. Yeah. Yeah, you he's do paying it. my bills. I mean, I, that's how I feel about what the position Earl Hefner was put in. Right. What was your reaction to it? Did he say anything to the refs after? Please talk about that. No, I mean, like, you know, there was really Earl. I remember looking out the hearing the bell and I'm looking through the curtain and Earl's running through the bomb, you know, but there was tension going on. Brad had asked me to, did they ask you to do anything fucking out of the ordinary? You know, there was a lot of tension that day, you know, but I, I really actually think Brad knew something was going on. I know that, but I didn't really think he knew he, he thought maybe after it was all said and done, he probably didn't think they were really going to go ahead and, and pull this this stunt, you know, right. in Montreal or whatever. I mean, Brett at the time was with the company, what, 15 years maybe, you know, running hard with the company, making the money and internationally in Germany, always selling out Germany, always, we were always in Germany, selling Europe out. Um, You know, but the company wanted to go a different way and, and, and you know, they wanted to go a different way. You know, Sean, they wanted Sean to be the face of the company, Triple H, China, you know, they wanted this group to be the face of the company and with some others, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just glad I wasn't put in that situation. Mike, you know, uh, I felt bad for Earl and I thought they would take Earl, take care of Earl forever, you know, but you know, only so many years down the road and he had it out with the company, I guess. And, you know, that was done. And I just felt bad. I, I just, I always think, God damn, if that was me, man, holy shit, you know, uh, I, I would definitely would hate to be in that situation because I was I was helping the family out too as well, man. Paying my own bills and you got to do what the boss says. I mean, at that time, what was that ninety seven or something? Ninety eight, ninety yeah, seven. Ninety seven. Yeah, I'm with the company twelve years strong at that time, you know. And you know, Earl came in about eighty eight, I think eighty nine or something like that. You know, with the you know with that uh, Hogan switch. Yeah, on Saturday nice. night main event with yeah, you know, with David his, his, you know, his twin brother man that was yeah. great that was great I heard yeah. they wanted to do that with you Mike but they couldn't find someone as good looking as you yeah right. to play your my twin. Ass. is that true my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would have done it with me but nah that was that wasn't happening I man we got blown away by that man I remember yeah. sitting back there we were doing crew and and I remember that fucking thing happened and like we didn't know David had a fucking twin brother you know we didn't know shit about that it was my fair, cool. they, everybody was kayfabe, man. My fair part is when Hogan cut the promo afterwards, like, how much was the plastic surgery? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that I missed those days shit. so yeah, much. That was yeah. some good stuff back then, man. Um yeah, that was good stuff, man. But you know, the screw job was shitty thing because I, you know, I felt bad for Brett too after the years. I mean, because you know, he went to WCW and then you know, really didn't pan out for him in WCW and Right. And he got, you know, then he took it ill and stuff like that. And, you know, he really didn't. I thought he, I would have liked to see him finish, his, finish off his career the way he should have, you know. And same with me. I, mean, I wish I would have finished mine off. Not strong, but just go out, you know, just on my terms or something like that. I mean, I was ready to go out soon anyway, you know. So it was like, fuck, when I got the call, I was blown away. I was blown, I was shocked, you know. Was there a reason why they let you go? No, nah, there's no reason at all. I mean, me, Tony Chimmel, Tony Chimmel was there 38 years. I'm 35 years at the time. Uh, John D'Amico was 30 some years, but they actually called him back a year later, I think, because they needed a production guy for music to do the live events. Um, I think Tom Carlucci, 32 years, was gone. You know, that, you know, it was just, and it, it, it was, it's a mark, man, because, you know, it, I, I think at 30 year and above you're marked and your time is ticking because it's just like Mark Yaten. I mean, we were at El Paso, Texas. I was living in Houston at the time, which I reside in Tampa, Florida now. And, you know, we were in El Paso, which is still a long ways from Houston. But I mean, we were doing TV taping on a Tuesday and, and they escorted Mark Yaten out of the building. We had no reason why he didn't have any reason why. And we were close to Mark Yaten because we did all the ring crew stuff like, 30 years ago plus for me because he lived in Pennsylvania. We always got together with the steel cages, me, him, and Chimmel. One drove the rider truck. The other two would drive the ring truck. We'd take turns driving each trucks, you know? 
um, Mark Ian was close to us. So they, and they just escorted him out of the building. They didn't let him go home the next morning. Like everybody was flying home the next morning from TV tapings, you know, at SmackDown and uh, give him a call then. But they felt like they had escorted him out the building. Wow. It was weird, man. It was just like, what the fuck? And That's embarrassing. Mark didn't, Mark didn't know why he got let go. We didn't know fucking why, you know. So I'm I'm good friends with Matt Stryker and oh, yeah. I, I had him on the on the show and I used to before yeah. he went to WWE he and I would work out all you know we'd, we'd be a team on the indies and stuff right, right. and he said I got the call he goes and I realized for what they're paying me they're gonna hire four new guys right and, and have, have four younger newer guys to do the same job will they do it as good as me no, no. will they eventually mm-hmm. learn yeah yes. so right. that, that's right. that's what he was thinking yeah well, I mean you know like and and that's true too. And tell Matt I said what's up, by the way, man. I miss him. Oh, well. But uh good dude. Um yeah, I was I was making some good money, you know. I mean, and that's true. They could have paid two other refs, three other refs, whatever that I was making, you know, that's true. But after 35 years, I'm talking three and a half decades, you know, like, geez, like you just can't, you know, you don't have to shock me about anything, you know, and definitely during a pandemic when they could even run indie shows or you know, and I'm thinking. Holy shit, I'm 50 some years old now. I gotta work the indies. I should have done that when I was 18, probably, right? <laughs> yeah. 